wondered how a single person can influence a team, a department, a division, an entire corporation to follow just one vision. Have you ever wondered how a single person can get the majority of an entire nation to believe and trust his or her words? Isn't that beautiful? But have you ever wondered how we will be able to reach full potential in life? What if this clicker was magic and we could see your future 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, the day we retire? What have we accomplished? How far have we gone? Have we truly maximized our potential? Well, what if I tell you that despite the abundance of information, the information <coughs> overload that we have access to these days, there's one single life hack that can do just that. And this, dear Tedsters, is the beauty of effective communication. And I have bad news here today. All my dear Japanese friends, um, unfortunately, it's going to be very difficult to speak like a native speaker. It's very, very difficult, almost impossible. But the good news is, you can learn how to communicate better than a native speaker. And who here knows Mark Twain? Anybody know Mark Twain here? Raise your hands. Mark Twain, of course, right? And Mark Twain will actually preface today, and before dying, he left us with a beautiful message. The message is the difference between the right word and almost the right word is the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. <laughs> Huge difference, right? But isn't this beautiful? The right word and almost the right word, right? So this is a key point. Why? Because effective communication. With effective, we have results, right? And communication, wait, hold on, what is communication? Communication is not speaking a language. Communication is not talking. Communication is the ability to choose the right words for the right person to generate the right feeling. That's the beauty of effective communication. And Mark Twain understood that when results and relationships truly matter, tiny little words can make a huge difference, right? There's a study, there's a beautiful study out there, a very popular study that kind of breaks down the numbers like this. Success is determined 5% by academic credentials, 15% by your professional experiences, but 80%, 80% by your ability to communicate. Why? What's well, simple. If you have a good degree, you will land a job. You're safe, right? You're safe with a job. If you keep doing your tasks over and over, you'll become more efficient at them. But in order to lead, in order to manage, in order to inspire, you will need effective communication. And that is the key point. Who here knows Brian Tracy? Raise your hands. Oh, there's like two people. <laughs> well, for those who don't know him, Brian Tracy is a true guru in the world of sales and negotiations. Probably one of the most renowned currently in the world. And Brian Tracy, along these lines, said something like this. Your ability to communicate with others will account for fully 85%. 85%. Why? Because Brian Tracy knows that in the world of sales, in the world of negotiations, these all fall under one beautiful big umbrella. And this is the umbrella of effective communication. It's all under that umbrella. That's all it is. It's effective communication. And that's why I'm here today. The reason why I'm here today is to share with you, with you, hey little buddy. This might be a smart kid. Smart kid. With you and with you, of course. Three communication hacks. Three communication hacks. The first communication hack is how to deliver a better first impression than a native speaker. Communication hack number two is how to communicate ideas during discussions more effectively than a native speaker. And communication hack number three is how to make better decisions than a native speaker. First impressions, discussions, decisions 
Aren't these crucial skills in the world of business? Right? Think about it. You will meet these situations over and over and over and over again. So that's why what I'd like to share with you is valuable. You can use it from today. And the most important point is, I would like you, my dear non-native speaker friends, to speak better than me. All right? Let's do that. Yes. But before we jump into it, there's one key point. The key point is communication can be divided in two concepts that also pair with each other. There's internal communication, auto-suggestion, self-talk, talking to yourself like you're doing right now. But there's also external communication. It always talk, starts internally and communicates externally. So it's really important to understand the what and the why, the mindset, before the how. Right? So let's have a look right here. First impressions. According to Princeton University studies, on a subconscious level, first impressions can last 0.3 seconds. Isn't that fast? Wow. You're really judging me. That's amazing. It can go all the way to 10 seconds, 15 seconds, but we know that in average we have about 7 to 8 seconds to build a good first impression. 7, 8 seconds to make the other person feel important, to make the other person feel special, right? So let's have a look at how we can communicate this. And let's start hacking right now, shall we? Imagine yourself right now. You have people who are successful sitting right next to you. Don't you think it would be a good idea to make a good first impression? You never know. You might have a business partner for life in this room. And guess what? If you introduce someone, if you introduce yourself to someone, most people will start like, hello. Hi. <laughs> Bit shy. But if you communicate like a native speaker, you'll most likely start the conversation like this. Hi, I'm Alex. Nice to meet you, right? That's how most native speakers will talk. They'll say, hi, Alex. Nice to meet you. It's a standard way, but it's definitely not the effective way. Now, let's have a look at this. First of all, if I want to make the person feel special, should I start with my name? No. Thank you so much. Who said no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the drink's on me after this. <laughs> External credibility, my friends. You know. And nice to meet you. We are creatures of emotion. Does nice to make, meet you make you feel important? Does it make you feel special, nice to meet you? No, of course not. So how can we change this? Simple, but very effective. Mr. Nazir, what if I learned about the person's name before actually meeting him? It happened to me tonight. Oh, Alex, I was like, oh my god, I love you already. <laughs> so learning about their name, especially in this world where LinkedIn, Facebook, makes it so easy to stalk you. <laughs> Credibility already started here. On top of that, what if we change nice to meet you to, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Does that generate a different feeling? And on top of that, what about if we add a little to finally, finally. This one word is worth dozens of words. Because finally is telling the other person that I've been looking forward to meeting you. I've been looking forward to this moment. One word generates tons of words. Right? There we go. That's, it's as simple as that. Yes, there's a little bit of stalking to do prior. <laughs> But in the world of effective communication, in the world where results and relationships truly matter, tiny little words can make a huge difference. And guess what? Hacked, and it's getting better from now. Communication hack number two, let's move on. Discussions, how to discuss ideas and opinions more effectively than a native speaker. Picture this, before we actually start hacking, Picture this, we're in a room right now, formal setting. Here we have our general managers. Here we have our executives. Here we have our shareholders. Over there we have our GMs. Some people are thinking, I wanted to be an executive. <laughs> How would you convey a message? How would you convey your idea? How would you express your opinion? Well, if you're like most native speakers, you'll probably use the following words. I think, I think, <laughs> now, why, does, why do these two words make me so upset? Well, simply because I think lacks assertiveness. 
If you're a leader, either you have a strong opinion or you don't have one. You cannot go halfway. But on top of that, some of you might say, oh, culturally, this is not oriented towards me. We like to be more neutral. That's fine. But on top of that, what about something like showing that you've lacked preparation? You haven't done your homework. You haven't done your research. You have no evidence. I think is not actually thinking. I think is guessing in most cases. I think is guessing. But worse than that, I think I leads to communication enemy number one, Mr. Bias. Mr. Bias. It's just for you, buddy. Mr. Bias. What is wrong with Mr. Bias? Well, Mr. Bias is communication enemy number one. Mr. Bias is conflict maker number one. Mr. Bias is relationship breaker number one. If you think about it, most of conflict comes from bias, the inability to see it from the other person's perspective. So you guys agree, if you haven't done your research, you're not going to get results. If you use I think, you might not notice it, but you're losing credibility points without even noticing it. So how can we replace this? What if these two simple words, we replace them with according to, based on, something something indicates that, states that, shows that doesn't matter. But what's so beautiful about these two words? Well, because we have evidence. We've taken the time to prepare for our meeting, and not only will we generate better results, but we will build more credibility and trust. And what are some examples here? What, what about according to customer service? What about based on economic studies? What about experts show that? What about extensive research? What about based on Google Analytics? <clears throat> What about according to internal audits? What about key metrics? What about market data? And what about recent sales figures? Who would you trust? The I think or according to recent sales figures? Which one sounds better? Now, according to Richard, our professor who gave a presentation earlier, which is really good, he was talking about how Japanese people are really good at this, really good at finding the numbers. But lack a little bit in terms of opinions, right? A little bit afraid to share your opinion, to voice your opinion. Well, if you have the data, you should not be afraid to voice your opinion. You can be strong about it because you've done your research. <clears throat> Hacked, baby. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Yes, yes, exactly. So moving to communication hack number three. Now, I'm going to contradict my own sayings because, yes, ideally we have the evidence. Ideally, we have the research, right? But there will be times where you have to make a decision without much time, right? Snap decisions, especially in a very fast evolving economy where technology improves, improves day by day. There will be times where we have to make decisions. And it's difficult to gather the data prior to that. It's not ideal, but definitely it will happen, right? So what can we do before we actually look at the hack? Let's preface this with a quote from Tony Robbins. Any Tony Robbins fans? <coughs> Three, four, four. <laughs> Sorry, Tony is looking out there. <laughs> All right, so Tony said something like this. To effectively communicate, we must realize that we're all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communications with others. Effectively communicate and perceive. These are the two key words. Now, Tony Robbins is a true leadership guru, he's a communication guru, and has done a lot in this field, and knows very, very well the field of psychology. So how do we do this? We're in the same meeting, we've got the shareholders, we've got the managers, we've got the business uh, angels, we've got everyone in the same room. We've already gave, expressed an idea, we're moving on to a new subject. And this time, we need to make a decision without the research. How would we communicate that? Well, let's have a look. Let's start hacking right now. What would a native speaker say? A native speaker might say something like, What? Mr. Bias is back? <laughs> oh my god, what's wrong? I thought we got rid of him earlier. He's back with, I think? I think we should? I? 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 <laughs> oh my god. All right. What are we going to do to take care of this guy? We don't want all this stuff, right? Let me show you something cool. Look at this. Ba -ba. <laughs> like that? 
So this is the most powerful of all communication hacks, right? So we have Mr. Bias that we need to get rid of in order to make a critical decision. What can we say? The most powerful of all three words. That was Mark Twain's lightning, by the way. Remember? <laughs> from a perspective, from a standpoint, from a point of view. Perspective, standpoint, point of view. Now, why is this the most powerful communication hack out there? Why? Well, simply because this get rid, gets rid of bias. Bias is done. Right? And by using these three words internally, thinking, who am I making this decision for? Who does this really matter to? And communicating it externally. You're not only going to generate better results, but you're going to improve your relationships. Once again, you're building credibility without even knowing it. And on top of that, <coughs> here's the bonus. This is good for decision making, but it works also for persuasion. Because working in the, in the field of sales from age 16 with doing cold calling and yellow pages and all that stuff, a lot of the most successful salespeople will say, put yourself into the client's shoes. What does that mean? That's perspective. When you're dealing with formal negotiations, multi-million dollar contracts, you're thinking of win-win situations. What is win-win? Win-win is a perspective. So the more you flex your mind internally, the more you communicate externally, the better you will become at seeing it from different perspectives. And that's what can give you a huge lead in front of most native speakers, my dear non-native speaker friends. So what are the examples here? From a client's perspective, from my boss's standpoint, from a sales point of view, from a team's perspective, from an end user standpoint, from an environmental point of view, from a buyer's perspective, from a company's point of view. How many times have I flexed my mind? A true mind shift. True mind shift. So once again, not just for decisions, but for persuasion as well. Three words. Three simple words. And a good friend of mine here today, very successful in his field, told me something a couple of weeks ago. He said, Alex, if you want to change people, start by changing yourself. And that requires perspective. Because if I want to change myself, I have to see it from your perspective, from your perspective, to better understand and then be power of influence. And one more point that I really want to finish on that's very important is if you probably notice there's a category here. We have buyers and users and clients, which kind of fall under the same umbrella, right? <coughs> Jeff Bezos, the Amazon CEO, the CEO of Amazon, the guy who changed our habits of buying, right? When he sets up a meeting with important people like you in one room, with people with knowledge, skills, expertise, he will do something that's really important. He will always have the right amount of chairs plus one. Why? Because despite their experience, despite their knowledge, despite their expertise, all of the decisions need to be made from the client's perspective. That's how powerful it is. These three words can change all results, all relationships. Because in the world of effective communication, tiny little words can make a huge difference. Thank you very much, everybody.